Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, this is one topic that we as journalists have to dwell with all through the year. As political journalists covering day-to-day -day politics here in West Bengal, each day we are face-to-face -face with massive amount of violence. Uh, each story that comes up, it always ends up becoming a footnote in the long and enormous history of West Bengal. And we move on. There is the immediate outrage followed by a lull and a possible lift service by politicians. Uh, it seems like the onus is as much on we as Bengali society, as much on our politicians. And we'll try and seek answers. And therefore, we have three uh, very eminent speakers from the political fraternity here in West Bengal. We are joined by Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharji, Rajya Sabha MP from the CPIM. So please come on stage. We have Dr. Sashi Panja, member of the West Bengal cabinet. Please put your hands together. And of course, we have member of uh, the West Bengal Assembly from the BJP, Agnimitra Paul. Ma'am, please. You know, it's wonderful seeing uh, politicians sitting across the table here on the dais. Uh, it is something that is expected. What is unexpected though here in West Bengal, you won't see their supporters sitting across the table having chai together at the local neighborhood. They're always up against, in arms, against one another. It's a culture that has been perpetuated over the decades here in West Bengal. How do we stop this cycle of violence? This is a big question. So our topic today, of course, is from the battle of ballot to the battle of bullet. That's indeed, uh, you know, the issue, the burning issue at hand. I would like to start, of course, with Dr. Shashi Panja because she represents the government here. Uh, Shashidi. Just a few weeks back, we've seen this absolutely heinous crime being uh, taking place in Birbhum, where we saw so many people charred to death. Uh, and we've moved on. And we've moved on to the next uh, you know, incident of political violence. When you came to government in 2011, I remember Mamta Banerjee said, Bodla noi bodul chai, which means that we don't want retribution, we want change. What happened to that path of change? You were traveling towards change. You lost your way, it seems. No, it's uh, uh, good evening to India today. Thank you for the kind invitation to be here. Uh, Indraji, uh, it is a bit complex. But let me tell you this, that uh, we abhor violence. We, don't, we condemn it in the strongest of strong language. And whatever incidents are happening in West Bengal or all over India also uh, deserve condemnation, definitely. Now, uh, to having to say that uh, there has been no badal after 20, 2011 would be doing injustice to us. So the badal has to be actually uh, experienced. And I think the people of West Bengal have, uh, you know, uh, the uh, development or the pro-development measures have to some extent definitely uh, touched all families of Bengal, which is again reflected in various electoral democracy tests, tests mm. of electoral democracy. Now, uh, we are not arrogant about it, but what I'm uh, trying to say is uh, we are uh, actually trying to delve into uh, or rather get rid of uh, the legacy which we came with. Now, 1977 to when we say 34 years of misrule of the CPIM or the left front with its allies, then it goes, there is data which says, and uh, I re just wish to re-mention that, between 1977 to 2009-10, there have been 55,000 political deaths. Now, deaths due to a political reason. But that's the past. And, no, 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 that, no, no, that is vast. Yes, uh, uh, and that is the difference that we are trying to make, to mitigate that, to reduce that. And uh, it cannot be done. And you know, in this state, when there is a complaint of violence due to political reasons, our chief minister orders for an SIT or arrests are made and punishment and uh, steps are taken. Now that is also happening, you cannot deny that. We have arrested our own people. We have also lost our own party workers. So this is not that what we are aiming for. There is a you know, consistent agenda. There is a consistent agenda which was very evident last year in 2021 mm -hmm. assembly elections in which 
there is a ruling party at the center which thought that Pashtim Bengal ko kabza kiya. You have to capture West Bengal. You do not, you have to, you cannot win, you have to win West Bengal. You cannot capture. This is not the days of the emperor that we are out here with our army. And you saw the army which had descended upon, to, uh, in, on West Bengal. And you saw the narrative which was played out. So that is the kind of narrative which you now see even, which was played out in Maharashtra, or for that matter, in KCR's Telangana. What is happening? That is the narrative. So bulldozing of democratic institutions or democracy is what is the agenda which actually provokes this kind of a reaction in the form of a violence. Why are you trying to provoke that kind of a violence? Well, but nothing justifies violence uh, hmm? in the first space. Uh, Ogni Mitradi, you would like to come in on that? First of all, thank you so much, India, today for inviting me and taking up such a relevant topic, <clears throat> ballot to bullet and violence. I feel uh, in today's time, uh, standing in today's West Bengal, uh, when you look back, you realize that violence has always been part of West Bengal's politics. When you start from the regime of Shiddhat Shankar Roy, uh, you know, the way he crushed the, the communist opposition that time and the uh, Naksal Andolan killing and brutally uh, killing, you know, whoever was, who, whoever belonged to the other ideology. When CPM again came to power, again, they took uh, help of violence with Bijon Shitu, with Shai Bari, with Mori Chapi happening. And that time our now Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee had said, uh, restoration of democracy was the most important thing. Mm. But now after 11 years, we see the democracy by this government has been crushed, killed, murdered, and raped. After 2021 elections, we saw BJP's 56 Karikattas brutally murdered. And then also our Honorable Chief Minister had said, no, nothing had happened. It was a very slight. I think today also she said it was a little thing. But the Honorable Court then said, that there is no law of land over here. It's, there is only law of the ruler. And it is not only about violence. It is not only about killing. It is not only about the guns and the bombs. It is about the words, the language that you use. Honorable Chief Minister is the captain of the ship. She is our Chief Minister. But the way she has been using language, three days back she said she is declaring jihad against BJP, West Bengal. What does she mean by jihad? Because for me, jihad means, it's an Arabic word which means killing of non-Islamist. So does she want to say that she wants to kill all BJP people? Let's take that question to Shashi Panja. That is the problem with the BJP, you know. They bring in religion, they bring in caste, they bring in language. And first it is the identity politics and then the division begins of India, which has already begun. You see, you, uh, you have misinterpreted again. The jihad is against the bulldozing of democracy. The jihad is again the bulldozing of the democratic institutions. It's so unfortunate there are institutions in India which should be insulated from politics. But, uh, you know, they are not insulated from politics. So they are very much politically used weapons which are used at times of convenience, like elections, etc., etc. Now, have you ever heard of vigilantism, cow vigilantism, new terms, new coinage? Have you heard of, uh, uh, you know, bulldozing people's houses just at the time when you thought that uh, the support is not with you? Have you heard of uh, the press freedom index touching the lowest in India? Are we proud about this? I mean, what is it? What is it? The main issues are not discussed. Nobody discusses inflation. Nobody discusses the petrol gas issue. So these are issues of people. Where will they go? There is no answer to it. See, what is provoking them? We don't want violence. You see, ultimately, they are, it's just, they're hit against the wall. Look at the casteism. Look at the well, Dalit killings. Let's bring in Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharji. Uh, sir. We've spoken about the reasons of violence. I mean, whenever such a discussion takes place, we get into uh, rhetorics, we get into water boundary. But what the armed janta, the people here, what they're interested in is a solution. Uh, you've been in government for three decades. 
and then of course Mamata Banerjee's government. You've seen, you've been in power and you are now the opposition. Where do you think as a politician and also as, uh, uh, as an eminent lawyer, uh, politicians have failed in this entire discourse? Do you still think that West Bengal requires a leader of the caliber of, say, suppose, uh, Ashubhash Chandra Bosch to bring political differences aside uh, and somehow build a narrative of uh, uh, unity? And there is no doubt about it. <clears throat> but at the <clears throat> very beginning, I condemn this attitude of blame game. Whenever something is pointed out that this is happening, instead of coming to any solution or having any thought over the reasons to make the situation ease, we always point our fingers to others. This is the most abhorrent picture which we have to avoid, number one. Number two, we definitely need political leaders who speak sense, who speaks in decent language, whose body language while addressing the Am Janta, the mass, must be very uh, civilized. If you use language, if you speak something nonsense, then you always encourage your community to be little more nonsense. And that gives you the sense of getting something by force. You see, from 1977 onwards, there were definitely some killings, but those killings were not of political parties' internal rivalry fight. Those killings were almost some sort of class war. When the government came into power in 1977, they had a land policy by virtue of which the land tillers were given the right to till. There were clashes between the landowner and the land dealers. That was not the clash between CPIM or TMC or BJP. When the workers assembled over there and launched their struggle for the enhancement of the wages, then the employers used to hire the gundas to beat up the workers. That caused bloodshed. But there was never a situation when somebody goes to cast his vote, he will be prevented from filing nomination he will be prevented from going to the pool to cast his vote. And again, if you even reach the polling station, your vote would be casted by somebody else, being physically present over there. These are the situations I am not going to really encourage this blame game. I feel that if the political parties really fight on their ideological issues, that this is my ideology which can bring sustenance in the life of the common man, and their ideological issues or political issues, economic issues, these are not good. If the message goes to the common man from the leaders that you better inculcate your philosophy, your thought process on the economic issues, on other issues of your own life's upgradation, then there will be no political violence. Here the political violence is because of petty uh, cash consideration, which we call tola baji. Here in West Bengal, after 2011 onwards, still dead, the people are fighting, even the people interstate fighting of the same political party. And I don't think the That's audience the here today uh, will uh, disagree with me when I say that there has always been political patronage to such violence. In fact, um, many political parties think it's a logical, uh, you know, uh, logical way or justified means of reaching out uh, and holding on to their power. And that's something which is really, really unfortunate. But when we talk about violence of language, the way leaders speak, and that instigates, uh, you know, the armed followers on the ground, and then you don't find a situation in your control. You say, wriggle out. You know, politicians should be held accountable. Uh, Ognidi, I would like to ask you, you know, we've heard what Nupur Sharma said. We've seen the kind of chain reaction that was triggered across the country, and she was merely suspended. Why did your government not initiate stern action against her for not just bringing such shame to the country uh, on the global stage, but also leading such as widespread violence across the country? What stern action are you talking about? Nupur Sharma is a, a very senior spokesperson of the party. She has been suspended by our senior leaders. The case is a subjudice matter. 
But would you not expect much more stern action against her? Would you not expect the BJP government to? It is not BJP's uh, or Mr. Modi's, uh, Modi ji's uh, responsibility to put her into jail. For that, court is there. Court is uh, proceedings are going on. But have we heard from the prime minister? Have the court finds it out? An equivocal condemnation from the uh, top BJP. This is not our prime minister's responsibility. This is not his responsibility. The, a few times, uh, uh, 30 minutes back, there was an interview which you took and you spoke about another journalist. Now you will say that, why do you have, I will ask you, why hasn't the Prime Minister spoke about that journalist? It is not our Honourable Prime Minister's responsibility. And coming to Honourable uh, Shashidi's statement, what she was saying, I'm very privileged to share the same stage with her. But are we supposed to learn d democracy from TMC? TMC inside the assembly, we MLAs are being beaten because we raised the topic of Bhaktui. We raised the topic of Hashkali. Our women MLAs were beaten inside the assembly, not why, outside. Why doesn't the TMC, which has such massive majority in West Bengal, lead with example? You are not supposed to speak. The simple fact of the matter was, or is and remains, is that nothing of such things happened. You see, uh, unfortunately, the MLAs who have been elected from the BJP party, they represent a constituency, they are responsible and accountable to the constituency, and their prime duty is that they should be in assembly within the precincts, uh, within the assembly hall, when the session is on. But unfortunately, they are most of the times beyond the hall of the assembly where the session takes place, they are outside protesting. But so they are never in the assembly. When uh, we were beaten, were I we inside, ma'am, or no, were no, we outside? Yeah, yeah. We were inside yeah. and we wanted to we speak all on know that the assembly But Honourable Speaker didn't let us there speak. Are marshals inside the assembly. We are not assembly. supposed to raise such questions which are uncomfortable for the government. Oh. Mashkali, uh, Bhaktui is uncomfortable. I am so sorry to say that when she is talking about Rampurhat or Bhaktui, yeah. Honourable Chief Minister was there at the spot. You see, Narendra Modi ji or the Honourable Prime Minister does not reach uh, the uh, uh, spot where the farmers were protesting for of one year. Of course, she was when, there. When, uh, we are very run happy. Honourable uh, Chief Minister let's reached have there. A civic, but, let's have a civic debate, please. But, but I the thing is not, that uh, the police I, were waiting let's outside. Let's have a civic debate. No, no, the people should no, no, know. No, no, you cannot do the that. The police no, no, were waiting outside. Do that. Just hear you her. cannot do that. Just you have to hear me out. We'll come to you. Just hear her. Don't do that. Don't do another bulldozing. Just, that's what I was mentioning. Bulldozing has Don't been done. bulldoze. Killing Don't democracy try to is bulldoze the opposition. The government. She is talking about uh, opposition Mukt Bharat and all that. They are talking about opposition Mukt Bharat. Imagine. And uh, here she is saying that they are the opposition, the vulnerable think, opposition. Know, our audience, and what have they done in Tripura? What did they tr do in Tripura? Did they even allow a nomination? Well, uh, Tripura so people gave even you the result. Allow, uh, so allow people uh, the to Tripura people of, gave the result. So, uh, you cannot so, uh, do after this. so much of a you got right. the result. So so the debate, very point of this we debate was, so she, just a second. The point, the very point of this debate was to get over water boundary and possibly find a solution. And our audience. Uh, has got a sense of what's wrong with politics today. You know, whenever issues like these, issues in principle come up, and when politicians are held accountable, we always see a uh, passing of the buck. I would like to end with uh, Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharjee and ending comments from all of them. Uh, suggest me one solution. We are really asking for one. You know, we know that most often it is said that we get the government we deserve, we get the politicians we deserve. But I'm sure this is not the kind of politics that any of us deserve. So I start with Bikash Ranjan Bhattacharjee. What should be the solution? What should be done? The first steps for West Bengal to break this violence, cycle of violence. I'm not talking only about West Bengal. My impression is that the political leaders throughout the country first read our constitution, appreciate our constitution, and try to inculcate the constitutional values and morality. None of the key leaders, the majority, really do know what is the essence of our constitution. Instead of fulfilling the goals of the constitution, the so social justice, economic justice, liberty of thought and expression, and the dignity of person, these are the more very important issues for the republic to run. Our politicians, in majority, do not understand that. Let them first get themselves educated on this that will resolve many a critical issues okay. here in the so country. So going back to the classroom, Ognidi. See, 
Honorable Chief Minister is the captain of the ship, as I was saying. She needs to show the way. If she is declaring a jihad, that is, she is uh, declaring a religious war against this religious thing is being started by her. And talking about Bhaktui, no, but Shushinu, Madam Minister uh, said that she had gone uh, there to help those solution? people. What in your mind is a solution to this problem? Solution, we all need to be there together. MLAs of the opposition are a very important part of the assembly. We shouldn't be stopped if we ask questions on Bhaktui and Hashkali. Uh, these uh, students who are protesting in, uh, beside Red Road, they are being picked up and beaten oh, by Kolkata I think, police. I think I will take Where is that democracy? A, I think I will take that as an olive branch, Shoshidi. No, no, Ending just, comments. You see, what you has to allow the democratic institutions to survive and function. You have to allow institutions which are there like CBI and ED not to be utilized for political reasons and political vendetta. You cannot get back at the back of the opposition because you cannot utkhat them, you but cannot uproot this rhetoric, them. Shashiri, so the solution, the solution is allow democracy to function in this country. You see, uh, you almost made uh, Bikash Dada the middleman or the uh, referee, uh, you know, when we two are arguing. But uh, you know, historical facts cannot be discounted. You cannot forget uh, uh, the 1977, the 34 years of misrule. You cannot forget that even their leaders have uh, given speeches which you will be shocked to hear and which actually allow no no it is not about what about me it is about historical facts which you cannot deny absolutely so from there so you have to learn but our so honorable chief what, minister what said what are we you you did away with this CPR is the bottle that we get bringing in right. this is the bottle we get an equally violent bjp karyakartas get murdered bjp karyakartas get murdered this is the bottle we get no no agni mitra at least have the decency to allow me to talk when i am speaking you are giving wrong facts and this is the national channel let entire india know what is happening in west bengal let the entire india know let what us you end have done to democracy, Ms. Paul, you Dr. people Pancha, are man, let us end talking on about an your government has, they has they don't destroyed and murdered to the and opposite. raped. What they have you done in Maharashtra, Karnataka? What have you done in Maharashtra, Karnataka? Is it? You think that the Indians don't understand Indian democracy? It's so naive. You think the democracy is so naive not to understand? Ideology, nothing can be helped. You know, the very point of this discussion was to find a solution. Uh, of, to find a solution as to how one can end this entire cycle of violence and possibly the narrative that's, uh, that is associated with West Bengal politics right now. What you saw on stage, of course, uh, shows you what's wrong with politics. There is something that Bikash Rajan Bhattacharji has said. Possibly all our politicians can once again head back to the classroom and read up the constitution so that at least with pride we can say we get the government we deserve. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this conversation.